Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm taking a look at Ubuntu Mate version 19.04, which is codenamed Disco Dingo. This version has seen very little changes. Like many of the other official derivative releases of Ubuntu, and whilst I may be very disappointed in that in some ways, in other ways I have to say that a lot of the changes have been to the underlying operating system, so that we now have significant improvements on stability and performance. And I do believe as a result, this is one of the best releases of Ubuntu yet even though it is an interim release. An interim release supported for the next nine months. We have Linux kernel version 5.0. This version of the kernel offers some quite a significant improvements to AMD graphics card users, but also some to Nvidia users as well. But another change I will mention for this specific release is the Raspberry Pi touchscreen driver. And that is because Ubuntu Mate is rather popular on the Raspberry Pi. I'll close this welcome screen for the moment just because I wanted to check the memory usage, and that's about 480 meg with nothing much open. Probably would have been a bit lower had I not had the welcome screen open by default, but hey. Helps if I try lsb release-a, and yes, we have version 19.04 codenamed Disco. The CPU usage with nothing open is very minimal. Excellent. This is the Mate desktop version 1.20. It narrowly missed out on the version 1.22, but uh, reading about the change log, there are some quite significant changes. So for stability's sake, the team opted to go for 1.20. And that is a fair enough decision. Not sure why I went for the appearance. So I was looking at the party piece of Ubuntu Mate, the Mate Tweak. Yeah, that's the one I was looking for. The options to choose between different panel layouts or easily switch between different panel layouts. So contemporary and traditional, fairly similar. So that's a reminiscent of the GNOME Classic desktop. Albeit some of the layouts offer a searchable menu. Very handy, I must say. For people who like the Unity desktop, we have the Mutiny desktop. It's not a bad similarity to it. There is a heads up display. Now, how do you get the heads up display? I know I've completely forgotten, but fortunately it has reminded me the Alt left, the left handle button, I suppose. Yes. Uh, how do we get that? So we are looking for something that has that. So let's take a text editor. No, let's take something more complicated than a text editor. Let's take LibreOffice Writer. Oh yes, there we go. Uh, we want the about box about LibreOffice. Well, that is something. The heads up display works in both GTK and Qt based applications. If you prefer the Windows layout, you can go for the Redmond, although that is the older Windows 7 era of the desktop. Is there much in the way of Linux distributions that offer the Windows 10 layout? Yeah, I think there is one of them. Sure. So memorable that I've forgotten its name, but never mind. Maybe it'll come to me by the end of this video, or maybe not. I'll probably just end up linking to it. Pantheon layout. Yep, we've got this little dock at the bottom of the screen. Very nice. Anyway, I'm a fan of the Unity desktop, so let's go for that. And yeah, I meant to mention it's got the global menu as well. Let's see how this behaves on various different applications. So we've got a Qt application, and we need an equivalent GTK application. We'll go for Pluma. So although it comes with a dark background for Pluma, Actually, this is not a good test with the global menu because this is going to be equivalent in each one. What it does give me the option of doing is opening a snap based application, for example, the one I've installed here, Inkscape. So let me see if the global menu works there. And no, it doesn't. So actually, it probably is a reasonable test. This is just something that Ubuntu have not managed to get right with the snap applications. So I've got the basic plain style menus in the Mate and the GNOME desktop, the GTK desktops. But at least we've got a fancy mouse. Whereas a cute based desktop, so KDE, that's the opposite way around. So you've got fancy menus, but a basic mouse cursor. So <laughs> you can't win. Anyway, for the sake of completeness on this review, I'll show you how those applications look without the global menu. So we had Kate. So there are the dark menus. We had Pluma. You notice the search menu is nice and responsive. And I had Inkscape. So basic style in the snap menu. Cute and GTK applications look nice and consistent. On the additional driver installer, there's some changes for NVIDIA users. Yes, I know I'm using VirtualBox this time around, naughty quids. But I'm more than familiar now with this release on a full system install. 
Anyway, for Nvidia users, if you have an older card that's not supported by the newer drivers, it will, it will recommend the older 390 drivers. Whereas certainly for the 1000 and 2000 series, I know from my own experience the 1060 and the 2080 Ti, it will recommend the 418 drivers. Something which I can't demonstrate, purely because I don't own the hardware, is that there is now an image of Ubuntu Mate built specifically for the GPD Pocket 2. They've not just built an image for the 1904 version, but also the older long-term support release of Ubuntu 1804.2. Fair play to them that they're actually still working on the older long-term support release. So whilst this release is not exactly overflowing with new features, thanks to the changes with the GTK 3 and Linux 5 kernel, it is actually really smooth, fast and responsive. So I have to say it really is a pleasure to use, and actually that statement goes with all the releases of Ubuntu 1904. Ubuntu Mate is perhaps better for older systems, thanks to the lighter footprint. They have tried to simplify things for new users. In particular, we're looking at here the welcome screen and the software installer. This is a very basic selection of software which is available for Ubuntu, but I don't see it as too much of a limitation because you do have the option of installing any of the other software centers. You even get the option of hiding proprietary software. Nice simple browser selection. We even get a feature-rich file manager. Kaha is a fork of the old Nautilus, so that retains more features than the current version of Nautilus. I doubt very much it needed an extension to put icons on the desktop. Am I showing bitterness and resentment to Nautilus? Yeah, perhaps I am. You can change folder colors. Yeah, it's a really good system. I know I've really only scratched the surface. Just looking at the Mate tweak tool, there's more things you can do. You can change the side to close, minimize, and maximize buttons appear on left and right hand side. The high DPI support has really improved in Mate over the last few versions. You can change the compositor, so you can have Compiz. It is all good. I've got nothing negative to say about it. Well, other than that, I like KDE better, but yeah, I have to say that I do also like the Mate desktop. In fact, it's simpler to use than KDE, so yeah, perhaps I should like this better. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Let's look at how the system usage is doing. Well, it's crept up to 900 meg after all these things I've been opening and messing around with. Yeah, that was a look at Ubuntu Mate version 1904. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.